Welcome, welcome, welcome to episode number 34 of the Eavesdrop Podcast. One of my mentors, one of my closest friends, I, I consider you a friend, obviously. Absolutely. Uh, we met in early or late 2009 for the first time. Uh, I've obviously, at, at that point, I already known who you were. You were, you know, you had already built MLG and uh and we're up and running you know this was in during the the halo hay days and mm-hmm. you know it's not often that you get to, were, you, were you the commissioner at, at some what what did you, you no, did it no. all so, <laughs> so uh i was the uh i was like the the brand and community guy right so john nelson anakin was our commissioner yeah, yeah. from like way early on after our first event basically he came and saved us um second um and so i was before the, you before yeah. you, I, this is sundance I, I i know like i i i didn't introduce you the, the way i wanted to not that i'm nervous just a tiny bit but i've, I've been i've been waiting to do this podcast for such a long time yeah. that it it i, I kind of got my brain all jumbled up so uh with us today uh sundance di giovanni uh co-founder of major league gaming um i'm here today because of what the platform that he built for everybody to, to to play in the you know flame sword is on that red bull can ninjas on that red bull can uh, i mean i can i can point at call of duty is on here because of the work that you uh and and the rest of the mlg team did so uh thank you well, no thank i mean thank you for that obviously a ton of people went yeah, into yeah, all yeah. of that and um and but they're not here. I, they're not here. So okay, so right. But 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 you know, some key folks were with us through that early yeah. those early days, right? To build what you were talking about, like Adam Apicella, John Nelson, uh, obviously Mikey Seps, my partner, Chris Puckett, who in the beginning was a competitor and yeah. then was behind the you know the mic and you know is back to that now doing other stuff. So we started out, you know, built Halo up, tried to work with other games. Call of Duty was always on the radar. Uh, was big online for us with game battles. It was hard for us to get a circuit going. Yeah. Um, the second we did, folks like you and Hastro came into my life, and I was like, "There's some good people, and we're yeah. going to work with this game." Um, and and with, luckily enough, we did. And and look, I'm here as much because of what you've built as you are because of what I've built. Right? Without people like you and and the other folks, the players, um, the entrepreneurs, the people who really who love this stuff as much as I do. I'm, you know, I'm probably behind a desk somewhere right now looking at the clock. Yeah. Thank God we're not there, <laughs> right? Um, I, want, I want to start for the very early days. I'm going to tell you how I experienced it from, from my side, and then you tell me, like, what really happened if you can. Absolutely. Okay? So when I started playing Call of Duty, it was in 2006, and I was playing Call of Duty 2, and there was a, a ladder both on uh, MLG. What was, what was MLG's name before that? So we we were running the, the this, game battles. Sorry, game, game battles was the online stuff. Yeah, we, we yeah. So we kind of merged those things together, kind of yeah. sloppily. We bought game battles. It was originally SOCOM battles. SOCOM battles. There yeah, you go. Way yeah. back. Yeah. So SOCOM battles. Um, well, I came into the scene when it, when game battles was game battles, um, and then I would hear rumors from other. Pro, I, I was twenty six at the time. I was working in the mortgage industry, and I uh, I I would. You know, this was a curiosity of mine to to play video games, but I I was playing with Optic and I had a clan called Plagax right before that. With me and my brother found it, um, but we played on a, on a website called NX Gamers exclusively for uh, Optic Sign. I don't know what the fuck that meant back then. Right. Um, you guys bought a website from this one dude. Right, SoCom battles. SoCom, yeah. So this this guy Chip was the engineer behind SoCom battles, and it was it was a great ladder system. Yeah, and we were like this this shit's going to be big. Like online, yeah. like we need to connect kids all across the country and make them play against each other mm-hmm. so they can talk shit. Yeah, and and celebrate th- their victories. Yeah. And, it really became the foundation for competitive Call of Duty for us, right? So that's how we found, you know, let's go play GBs became, you know, this thing in, in the Call of Duty community, whereas Halo was just live events because the matchmaking and the online stuff with Halo until Halo 2 really wasn't there, right? And even with that, it just wasn't the same cultural phenomenon. Call of Duty was just like, you know, every year Call of Duty dropped, mm-hmm. everybody played, yeah. you know, and, and every yeah. every single year it was this, you know, Christmas news was a thing and there was just these moments in time and when YouTube videos for Call of Duty started to blow up and um, it was just like, oh, this game is, this game has a lot of weight behind it. Yeah. Like, we, we cannot ignore this. No. Well, so we, man, I, I, I want to go all the way back into the game. What, what did you do? Let's, let's start there. Okay. Before gaming. Okay. Okay, because I want to know how you met Mike Sepso. Still to this day, oh, yeah. I, we, I've never asked you this question, <laughs> um, or him for that matter, yeah. right? Uh, so, 
What did you do? College? Like what? 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 Uh, what led you to to here? So when I was 16, I moved out. Um, I got a job. I actually graduated early. I, I um, got a job in a local arcade in a uh, resort town. So how old were you around the time? About 15, 16. When I 15 when I got the job, 16 when I moved out and moved into a department with two girls, college girls. And, My man. Yeah, uh, it was a fun time. And we had these two college dudes who lived upstairs. We'd have keggers. It was like yeah. it was it was a very interesting summer right before I went to college. Yeah. It, it kind of prepared me to not be a complete fuck up because yeah. I got a lot of it out of my system. Um, but I realized something. I would hold tournaments in the arcade for whatever I could. Right? We're going way like even pinball machines or whatever games we had. There was this one crossbow game where it was just like, yeah, how how accurate could you be? But people would show up for it. And I'd put up like those crappy little, you know, stuffed animal Lot, prizes yeah. and shit. And people would be like, oh. And I'd write people's names up on a board. And yeah. it was like, oh, there's people competitive like me. Bragging rights. Yeah, exactly. You know, and, and same thing with consoles at home. And so uh, it was just a fun time for me. And so then I, I went to NYU for film for a very short period of time. Film. Really, yeah, film. I realized after a year, basically, that it was, it was not for me. Um, so I got myself removed uh, from NYU, and I started to work in the industry. When you say removed, like you, I behaved badly enough to lose my scholarship so that I couldn't afford it because I refused to go into debt for college. Yeah, good. So yeah, so they don't teach that. <laughs> but and it worked out. I mean, it worked out. So I started to work in the uh, music video and and TV commercial industry in New York City. I very quickly realized that. I was able to do a lot of the jobs on set, started to ghostwrite some music videos for people, started to direct some stuff, started to make enough money where I could just like take months off and, and travel because mm -hmm. I was living lean, right? Yeah. It was just me, and my dog, and my girlfriend at the time. Uh, and I was like, I want to go see the world. I want to travel the world and shit. And so uh, I, I went to, moved to Spain for six months. I was in Hong Kong, the Philippines. I was in China, Vietnam, Thailand. Um, Jesus. Just... Cuba, and I was always with a Cuba. Camera. How, yeah. how did that happen? Well, I got a diplomatic uh, pass to go and shoot a documentary with a company I was working with about music and baseball, mm -hmm. two things I love, right? So we go down, um, and it's a crazy trip. They're like, don't get your passport stamped. I'm like, no, I'm getting that shit stamped. Yeah. I was like, what are they going to do? But yeah. we, I got it stamped, it was, but it wasn't like a regular passport stamp, so it was just like a smudge. But yeah. um, and we were there for like eight days, and it was incredible, dude. It was an eye-opening experience. I realized, like, you know, what com compared to where I was coming from, where these people were at and what they had and what they had access to, I had no right to complain ever again. Like, because mm -hmm. if they're making this music and they're, they're playing baseball with this much passion and, uh, you know, and this food and, and the cultural part of it was incredible. It's like, they're making this even though they don't have a lot. I have opportunity to have everything. I gotta go and do it, like, yeah. you know? And so that trip changed me. Um, that same year, uh, I f was the year I really met Mikey Sepso. Yeah. I met him uh, through a mutual friend. Uh, they were dating each other, uh, they, they're each other's sisters. They had tw there were twin sisters, and Mikey was dating one, and my friend was dating the other. Like four months, five months after I met him, maybe six months after I met him, um, we had, my girlfriend and I had announced we were going to get married in Bali. Holy shit. He flew out, even though I barely knew the dude, right? Yeah. Like I kind of knew we'd hung out and we were like, we, we, were, we were buddies, but, um, but when we mostly hung out partying and playing video games yeah. at, at our mutual friend's house. But once he flew out, I was like, yeah, homie's like, all Down right, cool. It. He flew to Bali, you know yeah. what I mean? So, um, so really quickly, Mike Sepso is the other co-founder co yeah, of MLG. Yeah, and, and a, a business partner of mine to this day mm -hmm. uh, in a bunch of stuff. And so anyway, fast forward a bit, my Wife and I break up after like three months. Yeah, divorce or break break up. Break, yeah, just done. Okay, um, and uh, I'm like, uh, it's me and my dog, dude. I'm just yeah. like, what do I do? And yeah. He's like, hey, <laughs> come move into my place with me. Get you out can of stay here. Stay here for a little while until yeah. you get on your feet. I do that. Um, How old were you at the time? At this point, I was uh, I was 26. I 26. Yeah. All right, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, uh, yeah, and so. Um, <laughs> Then we uh, fast forward a bit. I'm back on my feet. My consultancy stuff has kind of slowed down because I ignored it for two months after mm -hmm. the breakup. He started a company and he's like, yo, I need help. Will you come work with me and my business partner? I'm like, sure, I'll give it a shot. So I come in, I'm like third or fourth employee. Uh, we build up this consulting business called Gotham Broadband. 
Uh, and basically what we're doing is we're getting paid by people to figure out what high speed internet's gonna be used for. Right, so like we're doing all this consulting work, they're paying us, we're designing like the websites of the future that actually have video on them and all this stuff, like, you know, this is, this is back in the day. This is like, you know, 98, 99, 2000. Mm -hmm. uh, Jesus. Yeah, way back, I'm old, I'm 46. Um, anyway, 9-11 happens, internet bubble pops, uh, shit gets, goes south, we decide to liquidate the business, pay back all the investors and take some time off. Mm -hmm. That summer, 2001, 2002, play a lot of Halo, a lot of, well, a lot of video games. I think, I think Tekken was still was what, what we were hitting with. And then um, some, a little bit of golf, not that much because we were both not really that good. Mm -hmm. But we were like, yo, let's like figure out what we're going to do. And we said video games is going to be it. Uh, and competition is going to be part of it because we're both competitive motherfuckers. And so... That's where really this all started. And we originally just started out as Ambi Games, right? That was the original name of the company because we didn't know what we were going to be yet. We, we was kind of stealth mode. Like Ambi, like Ambitextures? Yeah, Ambi, exactly. We were going to go left, go right. We weren't sure yet. And then uh, we did some research. We saw these kids are having tournaments and there's stuff happening over in Korea. And these guys, and that's like crazy, but it's not, I, we didn't think that would play here. So like, wait, we had, how do we bring that to the States? How do we bring that to, the, you know, to North America? Um, Where did you do the research for something like that? Because the internet, as, as, it, as it, it is, it was message boards, bro. It was like it was really, it, and, and also because we were also in touch with people who worked at these companies that were providing high speed internet access. And South Korea was ahead of everybody at the time, bro. It, they, there was government, uh, you know, supplemented. They had internet. <laughs> where most people didn't and online gaming was just you know was, was was becoming a thing with doom and descent and you know and blizzard was blowing up with wow and stuff and so it was just an opportunity for us to see that okay you know there's there's a movement mm -hmm. right where people are going to be able to sit in their living rooms and play against each other this is before you could uh which makes me sound even older but yeah. <laughs> but i was like yo i'm gonna i'm gonna do this i'm gonna build this shit like like this is it like i i know what I'm supposed to be doing right now. And this is it. Um, fast forward, we, you know, we launch, we find Halo. So, so before you get ahead of it, because yeah. I, 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 a lot of people, like and me included, want to know from an entrepreneurial standpoint, like how you did it. Like you, 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 you skip from, from saying, the, I know what I'm supposed to be doing now, and then you fast forward it. Yeah. Don't fast forward it. Okay, please right, please okay, tell right. and, and, I, and, I, and I ask kindly because I am so curious about what sort of thought made you say, not thought, but strategy, and, and, and how do you find the resources? How do you know what it is that you need in a business that hasn't, that's, that's sort of been created, but not perfected, right. which, right. I, which is what I think that you and, and, and the crew did, perfected on online and video game competitions for, for what it's worth. I and mean, I'm biased, yeah. sure, yeah. I don't care. No, I'm no, 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 so am I, and I appreciate that. No. It, well, it's, it's, what it came down to was you have to be able to look into the future a little bit and say, will this behavior eventually be big enough? Will it scale to a point where it's a business, right? Mm -hmm. Where it's an industry and, and there's opportunity there. And, um, and then you just have to take a ticket and ride with it, right? Mm -hmm. And so, and believe in yourself and, and speak to a lot of people and find mentorship and, and find people you can talk to who you trust um, and wake up every day and, and you know, say, okay, today I got to move it forward, right? Because in the beginning, it's slow, right? I didn't have, at the time, I had some money, uh, but not a ton saved up. So it was like every month was a, it was a question of, right, am I going to do this or am I going to, you know, go and enjoy myself and get a, get a job where I know that everything is secure, right? And, and later on in the business, I'll talk about it a little later, like there was a point where it was a, either I stop right now mm -hmm. or I never stop. Mm -hmm. um, and so you, what you've got to do is you've got to, Fail quickly, I guess, right? It's the little, with, for, with the little things, it's like, okay, that didn't work. Let's stop it. That didn't work. Let's stop it. But this is working. Let's do that. Mm -hmm. right? Let's do more of that. And, and what do we think? If that's working, what else do we think will work? And over time, you get something called wisdom, right? Because you get experience. Because yeah. right? you have, you have uh, the ability to look at your track record and, and other people's as well. So for me, um, I had a partner who had skill sets that uh, complemented mine. Not necessarily a lot of overlap in the beginning, right? Mikey was the one side of the business. I was the other. Um, and I had a vision. And people always ask me many years later, like, is this what you envisioned? Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, shit's bigger. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. No, it's still going to be bigger. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah. like, we're not done. They're not done. So how could I be done? Yeah. So 
I, I think my my point of advice for anybody who's out there who's saying like, what, what, what do I need? Yeah, how? Belief in yourself is number one, yeah. right? Above everything else. Willingness to fail too, because if you go into it afraid to fail, you already have. Yeah. A lot of the time you already really have. And also an undying belief that like what you what you are like, this is what I'm creating, this is how I'm gonna get there. You believe in that, you believe in yourself, you do what it takes. Yeah. More often than not, you're gonna get it done. I like that, man. You know, be quick to fail. That's so good. Because, you know, in, in my opinion, and, and for me specifically, I've I've never been afraid to to fuck up, you know. Like yeah. I, that's just not the, the I'm not I'm not built that yeah. that way. And when somebody has that fear in their head about failing, it's like the same thing. Was like don't look down or yeah. Uh, yeah. Whatever happens, if you think about it hard enough, it's gonna happen whether you want to or not. Right. right. right? It's exactly. like if you look at the Matrix, it's like you know he knocks. Yeah. It, like, don't worry about knocking down that flower pot. And then he's like, oh shit, boom, knocks it down. It's like it's like what would happen if I said? So I'm 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 glad that you said that because I think it's it's super imperative in a in, in an entrepreneurial self to to be willing to learn more than anything and the biggest lessons come from hurting and yeah. failure Dude, and absolutely. that and that's insane it, 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 just really quickly imagine if what happened to me took longer than a year you know and now we're looking five years down the line and the same yeah. outcome happens that happened just now luckily for me yeah. it failed quickly for me to learn from that well no but, but that's look i think things also as you get older and wiser and have more experience things tend to accelerate a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. As the stakes get higher, if you, again, your resistance or you're holding on, your your refusal, right, could have put you in a position where things would have taken longer for you to recognize and realize, right? And it's not a failure in the sense that you failed, it's a failure in the sense that what was created, like the, yeah. the situation was not the right situation for yeah. you, right? I mean, yeah. I, I think that's that's what I see, at least. And, and from talking to you, I know that, um, it's just, it's more information to be yeah. put to use yeah. at a later date. Yep. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you guys, uh, you, you fast forward a little bit. Yeah. So fast forward. Um, we form MLG. We start having events. Um, we raise a bunch of money. At, okay. So <laughs> I've gotten to a point where my wife and I moved out of my big loft in in Tribeca, which is where we threw these parties. So you're, is, you're married by, by this time now. No, this is my current wife. Yeah. Right? Okay. So no, girlfriend so at the time. Girlfriend at the time. She and I meet in like 2000, um, 2002. She's pregnant, mm -hmm. right? And and she tells me right as we're starting MLG, and I'm like, yo. She called me. I was literally on a, my bike to the driving range. She's like, I'm pregnant, and I have like an asshole. I'm like. For real? Yeah. And she's like, yeah. And for, like a bigger asshole. Mine? Yeah. And she's like, I'm going to fucking kill. I'm like, I get it. No, no, yeah. no. I just, you, you, yeah. you I don't, we're, you yeah. know, got to ask. <laughs> 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 I didn't know we were exclusive. No, yeah. I'm kidding. We were. <laughs> but uh, she has a sense of humor about it now. She did not yeah, at the yeah, time. Yeah. So <laughs> I went, I drove, I, I said later to the, my buddy, I went down to her apartment. We sat there, we talked, and I said, yeah, I'm in a really precarious spot right now. I just started this company. And I don't have a ton of money. What year was this? This is two thousand. This is two thousand two. Okay, right? 2002. so we're like when we just just started the business, I was like you have to, and we didn't live together at the time, yeah. right? And I was like, you got to move in. We got to cut costs. We got to figure shit out to do. So, fast forward a little bit, and uh, I figure out what we're gonna do. She's living with me. I've set her up with an eBay store. She's selling merch that I'm buying for her on on Canal Street mm -hmm. on the eBay store for a, a markup. Um, making good money doing that. I'm working with Mikey. Um, and we're like, okay, struggle, struggle, struggle bus. I'm like, we got to move out of this loft. Mm -hmm. this, the, the rent at the time was like four forty two hundred dollars And yeah. the, back then that was expensive. Now it'd be like 10. Jeez. Moved to Brooklyn. And, you know, I, I had said right before my son Saja was born, I had said if th three years into this, when he's three years old, if I don't have this shit figured out, I, I'm done because he can't want for anything. He has yeah. to have a comfortable life, right? Yeah. So that's before he's born. Uh, six and a half weeks before he turns three, we raised our first $10 million. Mm -hmm. And that was because I had this moment. I was like, because I was literally, I was on the clock. I was like, I I can't afford rent and diapers right yeah. now. So it's diapers. Yeah. Uh, I can't do this. I can't do that. So I was doing this for the last month and a half or so before we raised the capital. But I had 
parachute ready. I had job offers. I had people who would pay me to consult, signed up. But I was putting 100% of my work time, my, my mental, uh, you know, kind of creativity into this business at the time. So um, when that happened, I was like, all right, that's it. Now we're going to go. Um, so we, we got a new office, crappy office still. We still did not get a nice office. Um, started to hire some people, started to bring people in and learned one of the first biggest mistakes that you can make in the esports space that I would advise against anyone. If you're going to bring someone in who has no experience in esports, I don't care if they're from traditional sports, I don't care if they're from traditional media, make sure this is somebody that you would want to spend a significant amount of time with to train about esports mm -hmm. because they're going to have to learn on your dime. Yeah. They're going to have to learn on your time. Yeah. Uh, don't bring them in and put them in charge just like that because you're like, oh, look at this resume. Yeah. Fucked up everything. Yeah. Literally regret that decision to this day. Well, not regret, but regret that I went into it so kind of passively. Yeah. I, I wish I had had some, I had said, because it wasn't my, I didn't lead it. I wish I had said at the time, let's think about this. Yeah. What, what might not work out of yeah. this particular approach? Um, because it, it, it costs us time and money in the long term, but yeah. learned a very valuable lesson, you know, like failed, failed with it took longer than it should have we'll never make that mistake again yeah ever yeah it's it's such a good thing to learn quickly too because if you don't and and this is what what identifying your role as a as a business owner because some people are hands off right, some people right. don't understand the meaning between owning a business and owning a job which is you know there's a huge difference you know if you own a business it means that it can operate with or without you if you own a job that means that you are there part in the all right so it, it owning a job and you know that yeah. that that difference so <clears throat> that can cost it can be the, the most costly thing that you could ever do like business will fall and fail if you aren't if you don't have your hand in every single button because you choose to trust somebody else you better be certain that that somebody else is gonna is gonna be able to manage your because it's yours and no matter what anyone says, it can happen. Yeah. It, your plan can go sideways even if you say it can. Oh yeah, no, we see it all the time, even with really successful businesses, right? And, and with successful people, like it's one of the parts of, the, of kind of growing up and and maturing and, and learning this stuff is like. You got to remind yourself, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and be smart enough to surround yourself with people that you will listen to when they remind you these things, right? And that's like the conversations that you and I have. Like, look, I've known you a long time. Um, I, we've had a lot of very open and honest conversations about what we want to do and what we want to accomplish. I've always done my best to be very clear how I can support, want to support, and will support. And to remind you, and I think, you know, there's, there's something that out there to think about. And you've been very straight with me as well, right? And so that's respect. Mm -hmm. If you can't have a respectful dialogue with somebody, then you can't, you know, you, you just, you can't move the ball forward, especially in business. Yeah. I think it's identifying that people's time, especially people like you and me, that time is so valuable. There's no time to bullshit. You know what I'm yeah, saying? And, yeah. and, and if you get above all that and, and, and there's no sort of expectation of each other except for the fact that there's no need to be shady with it, like none of that yeah, bullshit, yeah. then you can get quicker to the to the, to the the core of the of the vision instead of like, oh, I wonder if he would do this. Just don't think about it. Just speak yeah. out loud and, and, and it goes there. Look, no, like I, I've told you this. It's like, just you be straight with me. I'll be straight with you. We'll be good. Yeah. Right? It's like... That's it. It's, yeah. it's pretty straightforward, you know, when you approach it that way. People get emotional about stuff. People have run-ins. Uh, pe people change over time. That's all part of life. Yeah, that's all part of life. It's like, but how much you don't want to spend extra time and energy on things you don't need to, mm. in my opinion. So why not just get to the quick? Yeah. So you, so you sort of hire the the wrong person. Hire you, the you wrong learn, person. Learn, learn quickly. Yep. Uh, at this point, do you do you understand? Do, do you know your vision? You, do you know it's like all right, competitive gaming, major league gaming is the, is the name of it. So it's going to be video games. Did you did you think about the 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 whole picture of esports? Because even to this day, there's there's a video game down the line that hasn't been created that's going to be bigger than anything else that has ever existed. It's it's hard to deny that's going to be a yeah. fact one day. Yeah. So for me, what it was was I envisioned a scenario where we would have thousands of people sitting in arenas, hundreds of thousands sitting at home, and uh, the stars of the league mm -hmm. revered, right? Yeah. Now, structurally, did I know that we were going to have LED panels behind the stage? Yeah. No, no. no. But I knew we were going to have screens, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Did I know that we were going to have smoke? 
maybe, you know, and light, lighting that moved. And she, oh, yeah, but to me what it was was I wanted a kid to be on the cover of Sports Illustrated. Mm -hmm. And we got ESPN Magazine, so I'll take it. Yeah, right? that's way Tyler, better. Yeah, you know, like it's, it's like you, you, you – Build towards a direction, right? Mm -hmm. And and unless you're building the house, you're like, no, that's a five bedroom and it's going to be like this and like that. Like you build towards a direction and then you keep, you know, adjusting course a little bit, but you learn along the way. And so for me it was, I wanted there to be things like Optic. Yeah. I wanted there to be things where there would be fan, millions of fans sitting there saying, what time does Optic play? Yeah. <laughs> <You know>? like, <laughs> for, like legit. Like yeah. I was like, okay. I wanted them to be like, what time does MLG start too? Yeah, but, yeah, uh, yeah. but I realized it was important to have one because without it, you couldn't have the other, right? And they, they were codependent, but also they were, they were like, they were co-producing, right? A, a movement. So because me as somebody who's focused on my business and my community, right? If I create a platform for a kid like Scump, uh, or a kid like Walshy, and uh, for a businessman and entrepreneur like Hector, I feel pretty fucking good about what yeah. I built, right? Mm -hmm. And 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 what they're gonna build because there'll be a point in time when I'm on the sidelines watching what you, people like you are building, and being like, damn, look at this. This is yeah. This is this is it. It's fine because now it's in the hands of other people who are passionate and they're believers and they have a vision as well that they're and they're going with it. Yeah. You know, it's uh, okay. So I was gonna start fast forward. I'm gonna, I'm gonna write the note while I ask this question. Okay. Um, how did you? What What was it about Halo that? What was the game that you guys launched with? Was it Halo? So Halo was our our, our flagship. Um, we also had Madden for a minute. Uh, we had Tekken for a second. Mm -hmm. um, but the thing about Halo, so Halo was a Halo was the the, the core. Mm -hmm. Because there was something about the mechanics of that game at the time where, and there was, Bungie said it was 30 seconds of fun, like it thir every 30 seconds would be these engagements. When you did, pulled off a play in that game, you were like, yo, mm -hmm. even if you could never do that. Like yeah. if I'd get a no scope snipe across, hang them high, I would throw my controller down and do a victory lap. I didn't it matter if I was down by 20, you yeah. know? Um, and I got the same feeling when I played baseball or basketball, right? When I was a kid, like if I made a great play, I was like, yo, you know, that, that adrenaline, that rush. So for us, it was, it's on a console, fixed price. It's a disc, fixed price, controller, fixed price. That's what you need to play. Just like cleats, a bat, and a glove, right? So, and the same, it was just this thing. It was just, it sunk for us. And I think that game did, a lot of people had the same experience with that game, mm -hmm. right? And then what we realized over time was, okay, we don't own it. <laughs> they can come say no. We yeah. need to work. We need to hedge our bets and have other games that we invest in as well. Yeah, um, which is where the other games came in, and and some there was some turnover there. And then Smash was big for a while for us, um, and then Gears of War, and then we had Rainbow Six, and then we were finally allowed to do something with Call of Duty, and then we weren't allowed to do something, and then we finally were again. Um, so that was that was kind of where it all grew from Halo in in providing that feeling. And now the great thing is is that. There are lots of different games that provide a very similar feeling yeah. to different people. Yeah. I would say the same, the fighting game community, there's some games that just light people up. Call of Duty lights 30 million people up a month. You know, like there's still a lot of people who play that game. Uh, Halo still gets people excited, even though the franchise has taken some turns over time that maybe has you know made people question it, but people are still hopeful because it's a special game. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Counter-Strike, same thing for a lot of people. Uh, and, and so for me, what it was, was I realized that we couldn't make all of them, right? But, but if we tried to do really, really well around one or two, like I remember when StarCraft was a huge draw for us. And I would really love what we were able to do with that. But I also knew that it probably wasn't going to last forever, yeah. right? Or be something we could invest in forever. And so that's the other part of it is you just start out and you say, okay, if we can get enough of these pieces right, we can translate them over. And that was, that was the, why what we learned from Halo, we applied to other games, Call of Duty as well. Mm -hmm. um, and it was just trying to recapture that and, you know, those moments. Like, I still think about sitting in the sands with you, some, somebody from a Scumpy pulls off a play, just like, mm -hmm. what, like a, th a thousand people at the same time just roared in like joy, agony or ecstasy yeah. because – Someone they like just did something, or someone that they're, they're you know they're competing against did something. Yeah. That's sports. That's 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 the energy I always wanted. Those moments, those I was there when, right? You know. Yeah, I mean the the, the amount of legends that were created, and and as you were telling me about that, you know uh, about Halo and all that, I just I, I got a flashback to me living 
in the first house I ever bought is a townhouse in Schaumburg. And Liv was, let's call it one one years old. Okay. Mm-hmm. Or one. And she's still in her in, in her stroller and all that. And I saw I don't know where. At that time I've already been playing Call of Duty. Okay. Right. But like and, and that was my thing. Call of Duty too. Um hold on a second. Is that is that being picked up? Um I was playing Call of Duty at the time and I was I was eating and feeding Liv spaghetti. And on ESPN or, or TNT, I saw a sort of highlight video on Halo players. And then from there, I saw the Walshy sort of uh, uh, docu- mini documentary about him starting Canetto and, mm-hmm. and all and that. House, and, and, yep. yeah, yeah, and I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, damn, this dude just bought his own house off of video games. <laughs> and I'm like, I have a team called Optic and we're making videos on YouTube. I'm like, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta go to MLG, but for Call of Duty. And for me, it was, it was, it was difficult because we started out as a competitive team. That was just like a random picture. Any picture, any team that gets together today to play just a group of people. That's what we were. There was no organizational value. There was no LLCs. There was no (laughs) taxes. You know what I'm saying? No money coming in. So when I saw that, I'm like, I'm like, holy shit. This dude, while she just did that, to this day, the the way that that I built my hex quarters was a direct affiliation to my sort of recall of what an, a Red Bull ad was, where it was while she's sitting in front of a computer and, yeah. and the floors were slick and all that. Um, yeah, he was the first Red Bull signed yeah. esports you know athlete. Like like that's. Something we're, I'm proud of, and, yeah. and homie represented real well. Yes, <laughs> well spoken, dude. Clever, f- you know, fast. I mean, you yeah. you you name it. He was he was a quick quick on the draw, shoot from the hip kind of guy, and and that brought that sort of stardom to it because up until that point, video games were nerd, were nerdy. Oh, for real, dude. super nerdy. Like only losers in their mom's we basement. We would have people come to our events and be like, "Yo, I can't let anybody in my high school know I'm here." I'm yeah. like, well, "That's the opposite of what I need to hear, bro." Yeah. I need you to be like, "Yo, look, here's a picture of me. I'm at the MLG event yeah. by the main stage." You know, like, uh, yeah, no, dude, it was a real it was a stigma, man. It was yeah. for a while. It was something that we were like, "Yo, how do yeah. we get around so this?" So when you when you saw those people, when you saw, you know, the T squares just waving their their yeah. uh their uh cloth or whatever it was like you got a sense of like and then the crowd cheering you're like yo that's cool yeah like no matter what it, like video games aside nothing like personality personality and and, and that's you, that if people enough people like a thing to celebrate it so long yeah. as it doesn't hurt anybody let's celebrate it yeah you know what I mean? yeah yeah yeah. so t- tell me about uh the the first event how wh- how did how did that happen you, you, your first land your okay first. so the first event was a complete disaster we ran it in new york city me, Mike, and our a friend Paul Sullivan, who eventually came to work for us, shit show. Mm-hmm. Uh, we flew, I think we flew the best Halo team at the time out, the Dream Team. Mm-hmm. This is a team that would eventually go on to be taken down by the Ogre Twins. But uh, the Dark Man was the first kid we signed to a deal. It was a backpack deal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> shit, you not. I don't know how we pulled that one. It was like, you get two grand in the backpack. You got to wear yeah. it to every event. So you see Dark Man, Dustin walking around the event with his backpack on, sweating because he has a sweatshirt on. Whatever. Yeah. Had to turn the AC up, all this stuff. So anyway, we hold the event. It gets messed up. Everybody's like, these guys don't know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Get an email from a kid who's planning a LAN, um, lives in Ohio. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like, yo. <laughs> This isn't what he said, but this is what he meant. If you read through the lines, like, let me fucking save you from yourself right now, dude. Yeah. Like, let, like, okay, that was not what you wanted to be. That's not, that was a bad look. And at this time, Chris Puckett was very vocal on our forums and very harsh towards MLG. Was and, he the one that, that hit you up? No, it was Adam. Yeah. Adam <laughs> Uh Adam had planned, along with Tree, I believe, to throw a land. And we were like, yo, if you move it to Philly, we'll fund it. And, he's, and, and by the way, we also we have 10 more we want to do. Fuck it. Well, yeah. like, like, if you're going to get pregnant, get pregnant. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, um, and I also felt like we had to announce a circuit. Like, no, we are here. We are legit. We're doing this. You guys don't trust us. This is how you're going to trust us. We're going to put hundreds of thousands of dollars to work. Um, I might in the future have done it slightly different, but I'm glad that we did it that way because then we had to follow through. Yeah. Right? So Adam comes up to New York to meet us. Hold on. So, really yeah. quickly. So- 
so you throw the land new york yep yep you fail at it because what 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 went wrong just connectivity Brackets got fucked up oh, timing no. got fucked up the space was too small yeah game types were terrible yeah <laughs> like too many people showed up like no i mean we had a it was a good turnout for the our first one but but dude like imagine like that i i asked one of the teams mm -hmm. for suggestions on game types and of course what did they do they said these are game types we're really good at. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I'll put them in. And I got torn to shreds. Yeah. Deservedly. Yeah, from, from Puck and them. All right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hold on. So, let, let me give a quick shout out to the sponsors just because I, I, I'm so... I'm, I'm taking it all in, so I, I want to I wanna make sure that I don't forget. So really quickly, two sponsors uh, coming back this week. Zebit coming back for a third time, I believe, so I appreciate the support. Uh, Zebit, that rhymes with debit, believes that everyone deserves access to lifelong interest-free credit. With Zebit, you have the power to buy what you need and pay over time. Interest-free. The Zebit Marketplace has everything you need from everyday items and electronics to furniture and appliances, all of your favorite brands, all at competitive prices prices. Why is Zebit so awesome? Simple. It's a, it's a better credit option. Zebit provides better zero interest credit options for all members, no matter your credit score. Literally, all members, no matter your credit score. They allow you to buy what you want and need and pay over time with zero interest. Zero cost to join. With Zebit, there is zero cost to join, zero membership fees, and zero late fees. Uh, zero credit score needed. Your Zebit account is not determined by your credit score. Zebit does not check your credit score, and your Zebit account does not affect your credit score. To me, that sounds like a very good deal. Huge marketplace, right? Zebit has everyday items at everyday prices. They have more than 50,000 products in their marketplace. And brand names like Xbox, Sony, Apple, GoPro, and Fitbit. I wouldn't know about that. Uh, from electronics to barbecue furniture uh, and more, Zebit has everything you need for when you need it. Okay, Zebit has a five-star rating on Trustpilot, and they've earned the trust of hundreds of thousands of customers who shop on Zebit. Okay, uh, my experience was as easy as it is. Uh, we're still waiting to do the unboxing on those orders that we put in, so uh, maybe in a future vlog you'll see that. Sign up for Zebit today using the zebit.com forward slash eavesdrop link in the description down below and get $2,500 credit to the shop at the Zebit Marketplace at zero interest and zero cost to join. That is Z E B I T. Rhymes with debit, Z E B I T dot com forward slash eavesdrop, E A V E S D R O P for $2,500 of interest free credit. Zebit dot com forward slash eavesdrop. All right, let's see. Uh, our second sponsor this week. This one is brand new, and we do appreciate the new ones. Thank you for joining the eavesdrop family best spoke thank you so much for uh, for sponsoring the podcast we certainly do appreciate it uh when you're constantly on the go grinding away at the office or hanging out with friends there's too much time to think about upgrading your style or apartment duh unless you have a judith in your life don't try to do it on your own okay there's not much time to think about it that's why it's awesome to get a new box of awesomeness from best spoke post every month these guys are out scouting for quality and unique products to send in each box now you can experience it too at boxofawesome.com all right to get started visit boxofawesome.com and answer a few short questions that will help them get a feel for the boxes that'll go with your style whether you're in search of a perfect drink a well-kept pad or jet setting style best book post improves your life one box at a time each box goes for under fifty dollars but has more than seventy dollars worth of unique gear that is waiting inside for you the first of each month you receive an email with your box details you have five days to change the color sizes and add extra goods to your box if you're not feeling that month's box then simply skip it all right, so if you don't feel it, skip it. Just as simple as that. From barrel aging kits to limited edition cigars, weekend bags to classy DOP kits, Best Book Post offers essential goods and a guidance for the modern man. I'm a modern man, Sonny. You know that. Receive 20% off of your first subscription box. Go to boxofawesome.com and enter code eavesdrop at checkout. And last, but certainly not least, the sponsor that makes the Hex Quarters world go round seagate and i'll give you i'll hook you up at the end actually i'm gonna hook you up well i'll probably hook up the suns not not necessarily you sunny i don't think you edit or have that many files to save so uh i'll hook you up with that so again thank you uh seagate for sponsoring the hex quarters and having so much faith in the content that we create out of here that you um you put your trust in us so we certainly appreciate it. i know the fans certainly appreciate it. every single time we do a drop and a giveaway everybody wins so uh let's get back to it all right so 
Puckett starts being boisterous. Uh, Adam has hit you up and yeah, said, "Let I, me save you from yourself." Adam's like, "Yeah, let, like let, let's let's talk." Mm-hmm. So we have him come up um, to to New York, okay. right? And he's uh, he's staying with me at my loft. Uh, we take him to this bar that we used to go to, which was kind of the point of inception for for uh, and creation for MLG called Juno's, a place where Adam would visit many more times with us. And I see him, and he's not what I'm expecting. Right, you know Adam. Yeah, he's got a big bag over his shoulder. He's big, fit. Looks like a power lifter or a wrestler. Yeah. I'm like, bro, is this guy? Got, is this really him? And then, sure enough, it's him. And so, and he's cautious. You know Adam. He's like, yeah. I don't. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. are you are you good? Yeah, or are you yeah, bad? Because yeah. if you're bad, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm fucking yeah, fuck smash. Yeah. <laughs> so well, luckily, I mean, to cut to it. We were like, oh, that's this kid smart, and he's passionate about this, and he believes in it. Well, well, what do you, what was that, what was that meeting like? What do you, what do you say? What do well, you? Do? Uh, well, I mean, you know, we went, we ended, we ended up, we ate and had, we had some barbecue, and then we went to the bar, and it was, he was just like, competitive kid, loved Halo, uh, came from a part of Colum- of Ohio uh, where where there was a ton of talent, um, and it was a and it was an underground grassroots thing. Had worked in politics, was going to be a lawyer. Uh, so of course we talked him out of that. Sorry, Adam, but um, or actually no, maybe yeah, no, you're no, welcome. Sorry, Adam. Yeah. yeah, but it was just like mind, right? Like you like recognize it's like real, recognize it's real, and I was just like this kid is so much more buttoned up than we are on details. He's plugged in. He's gonna be a community face. He's gonna like he's gonna treat this like it's his own, mm-hmm. right? And it is. Um, and so. It was pretty much, it was like that. I think he maybe, it may have taken him a little bit longer. I don't want to speak for him. Yeah. One day you should ask him. I will. Uh, but thank God that kid wrote that email that day because had we rolled into Philadelphia next without him, Philadelphia at the time just turned out to be like the biggest uh, Halo event in the history of these little grassroots Halo events. Um, we had other games going on. Uh, NFL 2K was one of them, and the winner of our circuit was going to get themselves put into the game. We had all this crazy shit going because we're out selling. We're in New York. It's me and Mike, and we're like, sell, 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 sell. And we're doing a good job of selling, but we hadn't, there was nothing, we hadn't executed yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Adam was execution. That was what we needed. So um, we run Philly almost flawlessly. There was one incident. Adam knows what it was, but I'm not going to bring it up. (laughs) Uh, And it's like, yo, we're off. This shit's real. I remember walking, I remember meeting kids' parents who I had spoken to on the phone. The kids were like, I need you to talk to my mom and dad on the phone and then at the event so they recognize that this is a real thing. Mm -hmm. And then meeting those kids at that event and then knowing those kids and knowing those parents 10, 12, 13, 14 years later. So it was for me, I was just like, this is the beginning of what we're, we're trying to build, right? This is it. And again, this is like crappy staging, taped up MLG signs, like, you know, uh, I don't think all the monitors were matched, you know, like this is people carrying monitors into the hotel for us. Yeah. But we were off to the races. Uh, and I got to tell you, man, I, that event is one that I see pictures of it to this day. And I'm just like, yo, it's just it's a special moment in time. And I was there. Yeah. And so were a hell of a lot of other kids. Yeah. So it was it was uh, it was amazing. Who won it? That event was. I think it was STK who, yeah, who ended up winning with Clockwork on this. Yeah, pretty sure. And there was, well, the, there was an incident on the main stage. That was kind of part of the issue. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so so it was, uh, it was pretty awesome to be honest. Just to be in that room and like that, like people would at the time we didn't have mm-hmm. a center bowl stage or like our, our elevated stage like we do today for Call of Duty. We had a small elevated little stage and people just would stand around. And it was 4v4 split screen for Halo on one team. And so they're watching, you know, and like, okay. So it was a different experience as a spectator. It was not great. Say that again. What do you mean? How do they well, How do they play? So, so one monitor. Yeah. 4v4 split screen. So you have your three teammates and you. And the, and the same on the other side. So one TV for, for, for eight foot. Pl- for, for four cats. For, for, for four cats. cats. One team. Yeah, so one two, team for TV. And so, Jesus Christ. Well, no, but think about it. In Halo, though, in Halo, team screen looking. Like, if, yeah. you, if you could watch your teammate's screen and see where they died, where someone spawned, or if someone's running over them. Yeah. It's helpful. Yeah, of course. It's the way that game was built. But, yeah, no, it was it was 
It how was, many how many teams do you, do you remember around how many God, teams? Uh, it was it was over a hundred. It was like one hundred and twenty eight. And Adam would know the number, and he'd be mad at me for forgetting. But it's a blur to me at this point. Yeah, it's I, I don't want you to give me the recipe. But what was well how? How did you identify the business, like the profitability opportunities in every single, like, do, like sell team passes, sell merch at the, right. at the, at the thing? To, to this day, and I mean this, I, ha I still have, um, I think it was like the first true interaction that you and I had. We had a dinner here in Dallas. Uh, it's 2013, I believe. 2013? No, it wasn't. No, it was 2010. Yeah. Or 2011, MLG Dallas. I, I have the T-shirt, and it was it was you at the head of the table, and a whole bunch of team owners. Alex Garfield was sitting right in front of me. He <laughs> ordered. He he and I ordered the lamb. You made fun of us for ordering the lamb. You're like lamb. What the fuck? Uh, anyway, <laughs> so like, did you did you guys sell merch at that at that first event? Yeah. Did, did you? How did you plan? Like again, the profitability opportunities and and all that. So, how did you see so, it? So that I mean that was unpacked over time. To be honest, we we felt like sponsorship was our primary focus in the beginning, right? Which everybody who comes into esports, whether a team owner mm -hmm. or you know, YouTuber or Twitch streamer or you know, they're like, oh, you gotta sell sponsorship. Yeah. And you do. But but sponsorship has got to be one of the spokes, right? And so we were looking to get um, you know, better at things like merchandise, better yeah. at things like uh partnered um licensing deals, meaning things like scuff controllers down yeah. the road you know yeah. like a lot of stuff that developed over time um team passes became a uh, art and science where we would you know see how much the price could go up before t people started to say yo and then see what else we had to add when people did say yo to, mm -hmm. to a higher price um but really you know it, it took it to getting to a place where we could distribute digitally for there to be enough spokes, mm -hmm. right? Being able to do a deal with Twitch, being able to do a deal with YouTube, being able to do a deal with Facebook, those things weren't available to us in the beginning. But when they were, suddenly the game changed, right? And suddenly we're like, hey, um, we even, we, I mean, we had a successful event we did with Twitch where we, it was a subscription only pay-per-view, mm -hmm. right? Uh, for StarCraft. And it was, Kevin and I just talked about it at E3. It was like, yeah, remember that? That was great. I, I have it written down right here, yeah. pay per view. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, <laughs> everyone, everyone was pissed at me, but I was like, yo, I have to find a business model that yeah. will work for this. Yeah, you know. And so. again, we, we we go back to the fact that that failure is good. Yeah. And you weren't afraid to fail, therefore very you publicly. Were, yeah. <laughs> so you were you were very okay with trying anything and everything under the sun, which is what set you, you know, to 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 be who you were. Um, so you you hold the first event, you meet Adam, you hire Adam subsequently because of that of that one event, and then he 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 goes on and does nine more events. Or yeah, uh, nine, well let's just, I mean he just goes he comes along for the ride and has he's got to figure out the logistics. He's was he employee figure. number one? He was effectively employee number one. I mean we had somebody else who worked with us on mm -hmm. sales, um, but Adam is just, Adam's the real employee number one. Everybody yeah. who knows the real history knows that. Yeah, uh, he was he was you know the the. He was the heart and soul of, of the team we built for events production. Mm -hmm. um, he was the heart and soul of what you still see in that crew that exists that works out of Columbus, Ohio today. Yeah. And if you look at the people who have worked not only for MLG, but specifically for Adam. Yeah. It's like a roadmap of, you know, like good, effective people out there in the esports and not and yeah. other spaces, but primarily in the gaming and esports space. I find that the people that come from from low means have the best ability and creativity on how to make things work with nothing and and like skeleton crew the events to this day and i and i say this proudly to you know one be his friend um the events that he puts on with the skeleton crew that he puts them on with should not happen it should not be a thing yeah you know, on that top really quickly <laughs> to jump ahead yeah I, like we're here there are bomb threats being called in. Yep. We have one of the biggest Call of Duty events ever. Yep. And we get it done. Still finished on time. Adam. Yeah. 100%. And his team, because not only did he rally, mm -hmm. they rallied around him. And because he had people in positions of authority. I mean, I gave a rah-rah speech at one time during the event, but like, but it was at that point, it was just like, you guys, you did it. Like, whoa. Yeah. Yeah. And it was stressful, dude. Like, yeah. the second time where everybody's standing outside, it's just like, yeah. is this going to happen? They were, they, they were so bored. The, the, the people that when you look down from, from the Omni down into the thing, they were making they were penis, so, penis shapes, shapes with, with their bodies. With their bodies. So it was, oh, it was how, how bored dude. they were. The, uh, oh okay, so... <laughs> So you know you 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 start throwing these these Halo events and 
the teams, the team names. Yeah. That that was to me that was like the most genius thing that that you guys could have done. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, but from what I understand is that MLG created the names because they had a league in mind, yep. and they're like, okay, let's. It'll be tough for kids to build brands and go through the process. Well, team Fart Knocker isn't going to work. No. You know? so. no. No. Is that, is that Maniacs fucking yeah. team? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, you know, you, you're right. So the whole thing was I, I went out and I, I started working with this design firm that I liked. And we came up with eight team names, eight logos. Who came up with the team names? We worked with some. On some of them, we worked with players. Yeah. On some, we did them ourselves. Yeah. Right? Um, and but we did we paid for the the graphic design. We created merch. We mm -hmm. created jerseys. What's your favorite one out of all the ones that you created? <sighs> My favorite one. It's tough because I straight ripping to me was an interesting one because T squared was at one point the most hated cat yeah. out there. But but straight ripping was like the kind of like always almost there almost and then they won. I was like, mm -hmm. all right, that's great. But final boss, because of the Ogre Twins, has got to get it because yeah. you very rarely in any competitive, in anything in life, see two of the best who ever lived, not only be twin brothers on the same team for most of their careers. Final boss wrecked shop until Carbon came along, man. They really were like, it was like Jordan's Bulls, bro. You did yeah. not see anybody even touch them. It yeah. was crazy. Yeah. You know, it's, it, it was, was a problem. Yeah. It was a real problem because I was like, yo, we need storylines. Yeah. We they've won so many events in a row. So yeah, it, it, fun is there another esport in the world that has that many twins competing at that level <laughs> than than Halo? Let, more importantly, that come from the fucking Midwest. More importantly, <laughs> that are born and bred in Ohio. That's like, is there, think about think about like the legendary people that came from that. They're yeah. all from fucking Ohio. That's crazy. It's so crazy, dude. Like Ohio is. Uh, I, I like it's the water. I got so many people who've been a part. Of, there are so many people who've been a part of my life who've made a great difference. Who've become friends of me and my family. We're from Ohio, and I had never stepped foot in Ohio until we went down there. You know, with Adam Apicella to look at Columbus after he had moved to New York, but then mm -hmm. moved back home because he was like, "I'm not having it." Uh, that guy we hired who was the wrong hire. But I was like, "Wow." People like Puckett, people like Shibby. I mean, there's just, it goes on and on and on and on. And it's, you know, John Kern, like people who are just like salt of the earth, family, you know, like, and and amazing players too. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it's crazy. Like we um, we talk about it sometimes, like how for M the, the, <laughs> the Golden Crescent for MLG is Ohio. Mm -hmm. that's, <laughs> you yeah, know, that's, yeah. that's it. That's, that's where it started. The, that's the yeah. Fertile Valley. That's it. Like, that's where it, without the, without what was planted in Ohio, MLG, you yeah. don't know. I don't know where. I'm yeah. sure we, we figure it out, but it probably isn't as a, isn't as straight a line. I, I, I agree, and a, a lot of people agree with the fact that Final Boss is not only the coolest name in the history of, of in, my, in my opinion, of, of eSports yeah. and and. Optic was mine. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, like, yeah, like yeah, yeah. No, so for me to say something like that, that's a big means, deal, brother. Means no, I know, I know. Um, so kudos to whoever came up with that. The logo could do a little bit of work, uh, you know, the monster <laughs> and shit. But that was um, yeah. They they really liked that because it, it reminded them it, there was a character in mind that they had, and mm -hmm. there and the whole thing was it's like if you want to win the game, you got to beat the final boss. Yeah. You, we're the final. We're always there. Yeah, and I was like, I like that. Yeah, and a lot of a lot of legendary. <laughs> Pro players from Halo ended up playing for that at some point or another. Yeah. I think every because it was such a cool name that everybody decided to be a part of that team at some point or another. While she paid played for them, while she was on there for a while before he we went to Instinct, um, and that and that made a big like yeah. that was a that like, was a big deal, yeah. dude. It was a big deal because team changes back then. It was it wasn't like now where you like you have an event and then there's roster mania and there's there's a huge pool of talent and you know who they are because they've been competing for three years. It was like who else is there? So there was a team FFA was one of the teams that was put together to be like, you know, like a bunch of superstars because we had free for all events mm -hmm. for Halo. And, you know, they, they would do well, but team plays different. So it wasn't like today where you're like, OK, I need to construct. I have certain roles in mind. I know the talent that's out there because I get, you know, there are, there's this you know long history of events. So it was pretty interesting to see how teams were constructed back in the day. Mm -hmm. Um, so obviously I'm a big, big fan of, of, of what you built. If it wasn't for what you did, the, the platform and all that, like, uh, uh, that aside, I, I think that one of the coolest thing that you guys did was, was to, uh, to, to understand that, yes, 
The easiest thing to do in a situation like this where there's competition is to follow traditional sports and go down that route. Just sit everybody fucking down and have people compete in front of them and that's that. You guys took a different approach where you said, you know what, this this has to be like a concert slash carnival slash EDM slash rap concert slash rock and roll like sort of sort of thing. What what uh what went through your head in, in saying, you know what, we're not gonna follow the boring and I'm not saying the sports are boring, but yeah. the reinvention of that of saying, you know what? The fans are important, and therefore we can't just have them sit there and buy T-shirts. Right. They need to have an experience when they go, and to remember that. And I, and to this day, never in my life have have I had more fun attending a sporting event or a concert than it is for this. Now, yeah, I'm I'm directly involved in it, and, yeah, and I'm yeah. front row and center for that. But the fact that for a very long time you guys brought in sponsors like the Army or Navy. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Dr. Pepper, yeah. obviously one of the first to be super, super supportive of, of yeah. gaming and esports. They had the the free for all area and yeah. all that. Like what 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 went through like your head and saying, you know what, let's take care of the fans first. So uh, to me it was like if I'm gonna get you to travel to our event, and I don't know what your financial situation is, but if you're gonna get on a plane or drive for sixteen hours, or like if two parents are gonna drive, you know, two of their kids or whatever the numbers are, right? I'm gonna have you for th- Two days in the beginning, mm-hmm. events for two days, and then three days. Like, I have to think about how I can give you a two and a half really good days, right? Yeah. And so, a lot of what we did was to sit with partners like Stride or sit with partners like Dr. Pepper and say, "Hey, let's let's come up with experiences for people, right? Let's come up with moments like uh, autograph signings or free for alls or." Uh, scavenger hunts or just silly shit or old optic let's do umu you know like mm-hmm. like just something so somebody could come and be like i had a, i had a great time yeah. even though i got knocked out yeah like earlier or i was just a spectator yeah uh, because th- that's i mean that's your responsibility when you're providing entertainment right and so to me it was always like i'd rather toe the line of like pt barnum and vince mcmahon of like just saying okay spectacle and entertainment on the outside but then you know let Adam and his crew do their job in the middle, right? Yeah. And be respectful. I used to get into trouble with Adam for how loud the music was. Sometimes we'll go, okay, we'll sink down, we'll figure this, that will change the layout. Um, some venues, you didn't have as much square footage to do stuff, but it was always like, look, people are, there's gonna be butts in seats, um, a lot of them, you know, in the beginning, but we wanna keep them around for the end because an empty championship this Sunday, no, 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 bro, no. You have to still have people engaged yeah. and have a fun moment for them. So, um, that was really it. It was like, would I, and I remember I brought, when I, my kids were younger, I brought them to Charlotte when uh, Saja and Leo, uh, shout out to Dr. Wellbekins, when they were young, yeah, yeah. I brought them and I was like, all right, go. You have you have the staff badge yeah. and you have someone trailing you. Yeah. I want to see where you guys go together. Take your little brother. And then boop, 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 boop. Then they were like, okay. I was like, that's one that's one path, right? Yeah. So I thought about, all right, so what's around that? Why did they go to this one and that one, but skip that one? So I'd work with people and be like, yo, we need to change your booth a little bit, or we need to think about how to interact. And, and Astro, it's people who really, really got that very early on, right? Dr. Pepper, Astro, we would open doors at our events and there would be two big lines that would form almost immediately. One, Astro Gaming, because mm-hmm. they wanted the, the, their, you know, they wanted the uh, speaker tags, they wanted the headsets. Uh, Dr. Pepper for the Dr. Pepper girls and the samples, and then our merch booth. Those were the three most popular in the very beginning, whenever we would open doors. I was like, okay, that means I'm doing a good job with my brand. I got a great partner in Astro who's listening to folks. What else can we add? What else can we add? And it was just a constant evolution, you know? It was like always thinking about it. Yeah, I liked that. I liked the, the, (coughs) everything about it, I liked. Everything about it, like the the experience. The first event that we attended was MLG Dallas. It was at the Hilton Anatole down the street. And um, it was was where the Green Wall was born. My my brother, Diesel, Jay, uh, what is it? Carlton and Nerve. That's where the Green Wall was formed. And I remember clearly my fucking brother out of nowhere it was just every single time i looked over at him or found him like somewhere in the distance this dude was eating hot pockets (laughs) 
Like, bro, for an entire day, my brother ate fucking Hot Pockets. You look at pictures today from <laughs> December of 2010. If you look at any pictures of the green wall, you'll see him <laughs> eating a fucking Hot Pocket. You know, like, it, it, and I told him, I'm like, dude, if you ever become a, uh, an, 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 you know, an, an internet personality on gaming because you're funny enough to do it, there's no way that you don't get sponsored by fucking Hot Pockets, right? <laughs> The amount of social media interaction that happened during every single one of the events was amazing. But I always searched and looked to see the the picture of of the one dude, okay, that would go back to his hotel room and just lay down all of the Dr. Peppers on his bed, yeah. all of the of, <laughs> of the flips, all of the yeah, hot yeah. pockets, all of the I mean, you name it. They they had it absolutely like bro, it was crazy. Uh, my, one of my favorite ones we did was with Old Spice, right? Where we put sponges and soap yeah. in rooms because you know, it was like, oh, <laughs> yeah. bro, stinky, bro. It's stinky after day yeah. two. Um, and some hotels would let us do that. Some wouldn't. And then, you know, it, I, it was just it, looking back at the evolution of it. Like when we were working with Red Bull in the very, very beginning, mm -hmm. they were like, you know, we're going to create a, like this VIP area, this these experiences for people. And I was like, I can learn, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And then when Dr. Pepper came in, and Dr. Pepper worked with us for seven years, dude. Mm -hmm. Like we we got all their gaming money until they were like, now we're going to do music. Yeah. And then when they wanted to come back, we're like, we can't. We're working with Nas. Sorry. Yeah. You know, but and that was a great partnership because they were just like, they had the Dr. Pepper girls. They did pizza night where mm -hmm. they take people out. Um, it was and and you know we had. It was just it was just one of the things where I look back and I'm like, these are the things that people like yourself will, will look back at and they'll be like fond memories, mm -hmm. right? Like, and I could count on it. I knew Rob was going to be at the Dr Pepper booth. I knew I was going to see my my Astro buddies over there. I knew Wally, do <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like you know, it's just like because there's this personality um, wall around the outside where you'd be like, Oh, I'm going to go see these personalities. And that became our family, our extended mm -hmm. family at these events where we'd see them every couple of months or every six weeks or so. And so for a good, you know, for a number of years, it was just bankable. And it was, a, it was a really special time. And I think anybody who experienced that time of MLG, um, will appreciate it. Now it evolved because it had to, but that time to me was the proof that the culture and community, yeah could stand behind itself and support itself and grow to where it's going to grow eventually. Not even where it is now because it's only on the way to yeah. where it's going to be. So at one point, uh, fast forward a little bit, we, I mean, and this is to me what, what MLG was the best at. Bringing different gaming communities together and having them all in one place, and it is just like just like if you go to a rock concert, a heavy metal. This is not rock, a heavy metal concert, <laughs> right? With mosh pit and long hair and fucking bows, and then you have the rap concert where it's just hip hop dudes, backpacks, you know, you know, thugs mixed with graffiti writers and all that. Yeah. And then you have your classical music, like the and the fact that nobody bothered each other or fucked with each other, like that's what that that to me was like. The, the the culture that MLG created that was so magical because all the way to the left we had League of Legends right. in the middle we either had Starcraft or the fighting games for Melee uh, and then we had Halo and then all the way in the fucking back in the middle of nowhere with 15 people <laughs> surrounding it we had Call of Fucking Duty which you know to me obviously is, is why I attend to those games and and to me that was like the best and and, and to be honest and in 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 for me, that's something that that I still to this day miss. Uh, Bird, absolutely, dude. And I think you'll see a version of that again. But what's happened is back then, dude, none of the publishers had an esports division. Mm -hmm. None of them had a head of esports. None of them had their own leagues, mm -hmm. right? They were just like, wait, you're going to put up prize money for my game, and you're going to throw a tournament, and you're going to yeah for our right, fans, for our, our customers. Fans? Fuck, yeah. go for it, right? Yeah, like or maybe we'll give you some prize money, right? And so I think the. Uh, Look, I'm very, very hopeful that we can get to a place where there will be an opportunity for a conversation to be had around the idea of an inclusive event. Mm -hmm. All right? not, I'm not necessarily saying that at this event, Optic's playing, but I'm thinking Optic fans can play, mm -hmm. right? Like maybe we come up with something that's really interesting yeah. where we've got, you know, community focused events. Some other people get to stand up on main stage and, and get a check mm -hmm. and stuff and keep it completely separate and keep yeah. it in the off season if you want. But because that was. That was a lot of fun. You're right, dude. Like, and and for me, one of the things I, I was 
really, really proud of was the fact that when we would get up there at the beginning of those events, once we said, no, we're going to have equal size stages you know, up front. And then once Activision let us actually run Call of Duty, mm -hmm. we got them out of the back of the room. But it was, hey, be respectful, be kind. We're all here for the same reason, yeah. right? And people, more often than not, for the most part, you know, overwhelmingly, they understood that because mm -hmm. they were like, yo, you're right. We're in this together. You know, we're all fans of this stuff. Um, plus, I don't want to get kicked out. Adam would, yeah. you know, just <laughs> toss. Yeah, yeah. He One or two people getting tossed out early on in that whole process, and and everybody was like, okay, can't mess around. Yeah, no, I I, I think that culturally that's one of the best things that could have ever happened in esports, like to, to have that sort of camaraderie because we're all gamers at the end of the day we just don't like the same thing the same yeah. way that somebody that loves basketball and doesn't watch or yeah music or movies like you're into horror you're not yeah. you like western no you like superhero movie like yeah. you can have different tastes it doesn't yeah. mean that you can't be into the same form of entertainment what do you think the logic is and obviously you can you can say you can speak to it or not but what do you think the logic is behind the not not necessarily jealousy but the, the the lack of willingness to from developers to have that sort of inclusivity with like there's no way in my opinion there's no way that you know one's gonna stop playing a game for the other you know what i'm saying like I, that exists yeah but it's not something that's like so so that said in the middle where it's like oh my god you know uh, there's this meme where it says hey mom what's that over there he's like oh no honey don't look it's optic yeah. and then you look in the in the third in the third uh cartoon and it's a kid with like glasses all oh, like dude, dude. I, have, I have a funny story for you about that so there's a picture of me and saja when he's probably nine mm -hmm. at charlotte the event i was talking about yeah. and um he's we're sitting up front boxers playing starcraft we're looking up at the stage and someone snapped a picture and i had asked at the time no pictures of my me and my kids because yeah. i don't want people yeah you know being weird about them and and somebody put it up on red and it's like what's that dad and it's and it's like son as far as the light shines it's your is your kingdom yeah, except yeah. for that dark area that's call of duty yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like i was like okay at the time fair yeah but that's so funny i think it's look <laughs> <laughs> I think it's like you have so many hours in a day, right? If you're a yeah. video game fan and a lot of people are caught up in this, like, well, if they're not playing my game, how am I selling them loot boxes or how am yeah. I selling them skins or how yeah, am I selling yeah, yeah. them this shit? And it's rather than saying like, Oh, if we're, if we're good at our job, they'll come back. Yeah. Right. If we, if we're good at what we're doing, if we, what we make is great, we're good yeah but it's just it's a weird thing man it's like coke you go you if you ever sell peps to pepsi right frito like come down here mm -hmm. have a meeting with them go out to lunch you will not go to a place that pours coca-cola oh they will not take you to a place that pours coca-cola like they can't like if they serve coke you will leave yeah <laughs> like, i shit you not right and the same is true for if you go to a sales meeting with coca-cola in my experience yeah. maybe some people have lightened up but it's the same with the you know with the, the beer owners it's the same these companies they just have some archaic thinking. And I, I really think like at this point, it's going to take a, some turnover in thinking and rationale for people to realize like, yo, you know what? Rising tide, all mm -hmm. boats, baby. They yeah. go up, they go up. Yeah. The, 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 the smartest thing I ever did was to be okay and accept the fact that the, accept the true fact that YouTube is so big that everybody can be successful if they apply themselves and the, the, and and their success has nothing to do with your success. Their success has nothing to do with your failure. All yeah, the yeah. same, uh, I mean, it, you can ride on coattails, but that's yeah. a different story for another day. Yeah, of course. Yeah, and and that happens daily, daily, daily. Um, so you know, you brought up Saja and obviously Leo and Sunny. Um, they all play games. Yeah. Right. Saja is obviously the oldest. That's uh, that's the first jersey that I ever gave yep. you was was one that says Saja. He still has it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what what does he play? He plays mostly league right now, and he's good at it. But uh, you know, he's not he's he's not really into esports, bro. No. No. Really. No. I mean, he'll watch top level play. Yeah. But he's not like, yo, what time is the LCS on? Mm -hmm. No. He's like, no. No. And that's I'm not, like, all right. You don't you don't push it on him. No, I learned a long time ago. You can't, like, it's, it doesn't work, bro. Push. Yeah, I'm, if, if my dad was one of the co-founders of MLG, you better believe I'm taking pictures with every single pro player. I don't even give a fuck if I don't mind. Oh, dude, the great story about Nade Shot, right? When we're down, we're, we're down uh, doing the, uh, that event that you guys needed to win to qualify, mm -hmm. um, and he's getting a signed hat from everybody. Nade walks off. He's too flustered. He's too prepped. And you call by, you go, yo, Matt, that's Sonny's kid. And he's like, 
oh shit yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and i was like no 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 no. that's not go 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 i'll never forget that i yeah. gotta have a picture of him with the hat before yeah. nate signed it and we was like and then afterwards he's like yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway but the, you know i mean we go that's the thing like we go way back like i i and that's a great example like i've seen kids grow up and grow go through and some still are these stages of development when they were kids to young men to men mm -hmm to men who are fulfilling themselves and going, you know, and following their dreams. And it's, that's what I love most about this. And, and girl, women as well. Like, yeah. I've seen girls grow up and doing this stuff. And that's the thing that, to me, having been doing it for so long, dude, there are kids playing in our events today that were not born when we started the company. That's nuts. Bro, two of my kids were not on this planet. Yeah. You know, on day one. Like, my first, my Saja was in our first event in a stroller. Like, time flies. That's mm -hmm. what I'm saying. And so, if nothing else, if nothing else were to come out of this, knowing that we impacted people the way we have. Yeah. Good with that. Yeah. That's, that's, uh, that's amazing. So, um, Dr. Wobblekins. Yeah. That's, uh, that's also your son. That's Leo. Yeah. Leo is nasty at Fortnite. It he was nasty at a lot of things, to be honest with you. Yeah, he's a he's a natural man. But Fortnite is Fortnite's his focus because he's you know, he's playful and, and it's complicated and there's a, yeah. you know, a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, what's cool about that is that, you know, people like you know, let's call them influencers for whatever, you know, or players that are popular, they play like courage plays with him, yeah, obviously. Yeah. And it's not because he's your son. No, it's because he's he's nasty at the game. Where you could you could easily hit up you know Tyler and be like, "Yo, play with my son." And Tyler's gonna be like, "Yeah, of course, sonny." You know, it, it's what 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 uh, what goes through your head in in not using your influence in in your son's life in in situations where you can give him anything that he wants, essentially. Well, I mean, I have, you know, I've reached out to some folks. Tyler did play with him, but mm -hmm. off stream. And that yeah, was yeah. before, that was at the very beginning of Tyler blowing up mm -hmm. with, with Fortnite. Jack and he, you know, uh, he messaged, like, I think it was Twitter. I don't even remember. But but I have said, hey, if I do introduce it, what I say is, I was like, this is my son. Here's a clip of his. Yeah. If you ever want to play with him, he has asked, you know, he's he doesn't have any social media yeah, yet. Yeah. You know. How he, old is he? Uh, he's 11 now, mm -hmm. right? Uh, 11, 12, yeah, 11. Uh, now he has social media, but I monitor it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I don't, I don't, I always tell people it's not a pressure thing. Yeah. Right. And I don't ask all that. I've, I think I've asked a grand total of four times. Mm -hmm. Um, he, however, has done enough for himself for people to search him out now. Yeah. Yeah. So there's like, we had an endorsement deal, a sponsorship deal come across the table, a team deal, but he's too young. Like a bunch of stuff. And I'm just like, dude, you, you know, pump the brakes. Yeah, you yeah. have a YouTube channel, you know, and you've got, you've got 30 some thousand subs. Like put some content up, bro. Yeah, like yeah. make some more videos. And he's, he was like, he, uh, yesterday I was in the car, uh, driving from Chicago and he's like, FaceTime. He's like, dad, I'm out of school now. I can focus on making some content for YouTube. I was like, all right, go find some videos you really like a lot. Let's see what the you know the common thread is, and then let me know. He's like, okay. He's like, should I ask anybody? I was like, no, no, you do this on your own. Because mm -hmm. right? I also don't want him to stop being a free thinker and an individual yeah. and an independent. So, um, and if I gave him everything, he's not going to appreciate it. He's no. not, you know, he's got to learn. I what ours is ours, and what's our children's our children. Mm -hmm. We will give them a lot of things, yeah. but the thing we have to give them, I think, the more often than not, is yeah. the ability to do stuff for themselves. Yeah. So you know who's um, who's in a in a, in a in a weird predicament, and it has has been for a while is uh, uh, gen the general family. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, with the, because general the the Call of Duty player is good, and. Like he almost always catches flack because of who his, who his parents are and how you know wealthy they are, but they can't pay for him to perform the way that he performs on so, fucking stage. So for me, like it 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 annoys me to no end when people are, are just so ignorant to the fact that dude, you, you know, know what I'm saying Look, you can't pay your way to a fucking championship. Right, and we had we saw that all the way back with Halo back in the day, and Steph Curry gets some of it because he grew up in a wealthy family because yeah. his old man played ball. Yeah. How's LeBron going to raise his kids? Should we hold LeBron's kids back? Mm -hmm. Right? Like, if you, if you can, as a parent, yeah. are you going to provide a comfortable life, a life where you get to experience things, a life where you don't maybe have to wake up worrying about certain things or, or have the stresses mm -hmm. of a family where the parents are worrying about those yeah. things? Or are you going to not, right? Like, is, are you just going to be like, no, you got to 
Do it on your own. Don't make your own sandwich. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. You go, no, you, we are, we're not going to go to the movies. No, we're not going to go you know, on vacation. It's, I get it, but like the, hating on people because of where they come from, he didn't choose to be yeah. born to that family, yeah, right? Yeah. Is he a good guy? Is he, is, you know, is he, did he do something to you that upset you? That's a different story. Yeah. I, don't, I can't speak to that. What I can speak to is like that, that kind of attention will get you nowhere in life. Yeah. Nowhere, but no, unhappy. No. It, but negative, yeah. You know, it's uh, it's just uh, one of those things that that's super, super, super annoying to me. Just from that, uh, at what age do you think that you'll you'll be like, all right, you can explore sort of, you know, teams or you know sponsorships and like I, you know because he's eleven, yeah. like there, there's no way. But thirteen is the answer, by yeah, the way. Thirteen, because that's when he's legally allowed to, as a minor, I can sign on his behalf. Explore. Yeah. Not necessarily do, but yeah. explore. And, and and because, I mean, he, you know, I mean, he's a sharp kid. Mm -hmm. He's a super smart kid. And we're actually going to, he he's a straight A kid at, in school. Next year, he's going to be online school from home so he can focus on it more. Yeah. And because we just, we're, we're very flexible with that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I, I homeschooled my kids, though. So, so yeah. yeah I, no, I, I'm look, we, our youngest finished the year this year homeschooled. We got done in two and a half hours, what would take them two days at school, to yeah. be perfectly honest, right? And so, yeah. um, but because some of the friends that he's made who are a little bit older, who are competing and who are trying to build up their yeah. you know, profiles, he's asked them, like, so what, you know, do you go to, where do you go to school? Where do you do? And, and so he's pieces again. He's like, Dad, I want to try this. Yeah. I'm like, all right. We can try it. Yeah. Why not? We'll see how it works. But again, if it doesn't work, the plan is we go to something that we know will work. Yeah. Right? So I'm, um, yeah, I, I think, you know, when he's 13, we'll, uh, we'll pick the conversations up again. But I also want him to enjoy his childhood, right? I want him to enjoy being the age that he is now. And I want him to enjoy yeah. growing up and, and having, uh, you know, just, he had a pool party yesterday while I was driving in Wisconsin. And I was just like, I could hear the kids in the background. I heard him at one point yell, you know, yell out because his voice is very recognizable. And my wife was on the phone. She's like, that was Leo. And mm -hmm. then all of a sudden I heard Sundance scream. And I was like, they're being kids. Yeah. They're kids. They have technology in front of them and access to information. But, yeah. they're, but they're kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boys. Um, well, I was just, I just had to. No, no, it's good. It's good. I just had a thought. Um, okay. So, you know, the MLG is going great. MLG, you know, TV comes along and, and yeah. you, you guys figure out the that you know there there's there's opportunity just like on youtube anybody can be successful just on, on the internet anybody can be successful if there's a twitch there can certainly be a mixer the same way that it mm -hmm. could be uh uh what else was there some sling tv or some shit yeah. like, whatever <laughs> and so and, and then comes along mlg tv um I'll, you know some people were like well you know why don't they just use you know twitch right, right. The, when the question should have been like why wouldn't they try to do what twitch did if 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 I at the beginning said, well, why would I start a team if if uh, Team Envious yeah. already exists? Why don't I just move my players there? Why you know like that that competition is good in all aspects. Period. It, 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 if if Phase wouldn't have climbed the ranks the way that it did during Modern Warfare Two, to we would have never. I would have never mentally evolved into saying, all right. We're getting our asses kicked on 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 sniper montages. They're they're fresher. <laughs> Let's focus on competitive. And if we would have never focused on competitive and focused on the Nate shots and, and, and the and, and the Mercs and the Brambos and the big timers and the yeah, J-Caps. I mean, the list. The yeah, list. the list goes on. It, we, we wouldn't be where we're at today. So, uh, again, competition is good, period. And and the only time the competition is 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 not healthy is when the people you're competing against are complete fucking assholes and, and there's something more <laughs> there than just competition for competition's sake. Um, when you guys decide, okay, you, you, you've taken... You took MLG as far as you possibly could in your head. Obviously, I wouldn't say that. I would say it was a mixed. It was there, we got there through mixed thought. Mm -hmm. um, there were some people inside the company who felt very strongly about it. There were some who were not convinced. Mm -hmm. Right. So the point was, we're spending a lot of money to produce these events and create this content, and it's really sticky. But we're putting it on a platform where it's hard to monetize because at the time Twitch was not no. what it is today. Mm -mm. It was, I mean, it was a 800 pound gorilla yeah. now it's an 8,000 pound gorilla but yeah. we had to do special deals with them around monetization and like 
oh, this is really tough. And so our sales team had had some conversations about pre-selling stuff. And originally we were doing that where we would sell stuff and then roll it through their ads delivery system, but we weren't getting the tracking we need. This is not a knock on Twitch. Like, yeah. like we went head to head in some of this stuff. And there were times when they were out in the market saying stuff about us and our guys were saying stuff about them. And which I wish we could have avoided, but that's, that was that like, Hey, you know, I gotta, I gotta close a deal. I gotta yeah. get something done. And so, um, what ended up happening was we got offers for very high pre-buy rates for video if we were delivering it ourselves, right? And so we struggled with how to do that. We put too much time and effort at a time when we were we were not like we we didn't have as much capital on hand as we should have to mm-hmm. do this. And I went out, and at this point, we had raised a lot of money. Uh, What's a lot of money? Sixty-seven million total, ex- excluding what Mike and I and Angel Round had done. Um, and we raised the second. We raised this money in a short period of time. We raised the first ten, then we raised a bunch after that, and then over time, we got some more. Yeah. Um, and the board, I was like, "Yo, let's double down." I was like, "If we can get over this next hump, we will be in a position to transact with a with Microsoft, I think, mm-hmm. um, with Activision Blizzard, maybe, mm-hmm. maybe, maybe EA, but that's not really. But you know, it's just I had to list Yahoo, who I thought, Google, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, Yahoo. Don't get me started on that. But, um, <laughs> So we went at it. It took development resources away from other areas because we were, we were constrained. We got a product out. It kind of worked. It wasn't everything that some people inside the company thought it was, but it allowed us to do something very important. It allowed us to start to have a conversation with people about the fact that we controlled content plus distribution, right? So that's content is king, content plus distribution, King Kong, right? Mm-hmm. And so we have that now. Um, did we oversell it to ourselves? Maybe. Did we oversell it to some of our partners? Not maybe a tiny bit, but in that arms war, yeah. right? When we brought on a lot of the Call of Duty players, a lot of teams, and we were guaranteeing high CPMs and we were delivering those, but there became a frustration because there were still the pre-existing communities that existed on Twitch. People like Matt, for example, who'd built a channel. People, you know, at Twitch getting in and saying to them, "Hey, you know, come back, come back mm-hmm. to Flavor Town," uh, which I get. We had to continue to ramp up spending, yeah. and they could just ride it out. So, um, but that eventually led to a situation which which paid a very large money amount mm-hmm. of money for the Overwatch League content, right? Mm-hmm. Because ninety million was it? Yeah, because when you say, "Hey, we have the capability," we're not saying we're going to do it. You, we need to be made whole on this, and so um, it was early. Wasn't executed perfectly, but it had to be done. And anybody who's spending money to produce their content on their own has the right to explore that. Uh, learned a lot from that, man. Talk about fail quick. <laughs> yeah. Like learned a lot. Yeah. And I think, look, like I said, the twist to us was so great in so many ways, but then it, it was a, a ceiling to it for us at the time. Now yeah. that ceiling, I look at Twitch, I don't see it. I think I think Twitch has handled a lot of that stuff. Um, you know, YouTube is, has done a lot of work, uh, obviously, in the gaming stuff with Ryan. I mean, Fwiz has done a great job, but they're not, they, and they don't necessarily want to be the home for live mm-hmm. esports, yeah. right? Because they're just like, oh, we got everything else. Everything. <laughs> everything. Literally. Yeah. When, when, you, when you think, when you, have, you, have you seen those graphs where you're like, this is the, this is the, this is Earth, this is the sun, this is, you know, star, and then this is the other star, and this is the other star. Yeah. That's the, that's the way I look at like the current yeah. the ecosystem that is gaming, right? You have, you have, uh, you know, Mixer, and then you have Twitch, and then you have like YouTube, which is yeah. a big, like yeah. the biggest. Thing. So it, to me, it's like, again, there, there's so much room. I mean, look at how successful Twitch is, even though they're not the biggest gaming platform for video or uh, live or on demand. I mean, I don't think they they do kind of on demand, right? Like there's a they do some on demand, but it's not their it's not it's not their, their focus. Core, yeah, you know, it's not their focus. And look, they'll evolve over time. I don't think that's a finished product. It mm-hmm. can't be. But um, you know, th- they Justin TV pivoted to Twitch. Own it. Uh, League of Legends comes along, whoosh, boom! Right. Uh, our events, ESL, uh, IPL, all competing, throwing these huge events. So you have appointment viewing, boom. Yeah. Uh, fast forward to Fortnite, boom. They ri- can ride the wave of any big yeah. hit. Anything yeah, yeah. that comes out that's a cultural phenomenon, they're yeah. set up to do live. Now they've pivoted back where they've got 
a lot of the stuff that you used to see on Justin TV there. Mm -hmm. But the difference is, is that it's, it's like, a massive like business and, and they and can stuff. actually monitor it, yeah. you know, better than they could back in the day. So yeah. I, I think it's fascinating to see gaming was the hook. Yeah. And then it took them out of this generalist thing. And now, now they're going back where they can have some of that back. YouTube, similarly, right? Music, number one on YouTube and probably will always be because like people just want to put on playlists. Gaming number two. Yeah. Dude, are you like you know, say I want to I want to be a YouTuber. What should I do? Let yeah. me think. Am I can I play music? No. Mm -hmm. Can I play video games? Yeah. Yeah. Am I semi funny? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> that's uh that that's why. So I, I the thing about Twitch and the thing about MLG is that you know culturally, I mean, and and I like ESL. Like they they do a great job, but. I don't ever see somebody walking around with a with an ESL hoodie the way that I see myself running around with an MLG hoodie or other people's. Yeah. So you guys did a, a really good job of sort of creating this lifestyle brand that that happened around that area, um, and it has to do very much with the early days of the of the first signed athletes to Red Bull. It has to do a lot with uh, how many cans was T squared on for Dr Pepper? Oh, one hundred and eighty two million. One hundred and eighty two million cans had bottled. Yeah, it was the sixteen ounce individual sale bottle so it yeah. wasn't even the ones that you could, like walmart sales of dr pepper when he went on there like skyrocketed because they were individually like, people would send in pictures of the conveyor belt you know a checkout filled with these bottles yeah barack obama's um inauguration there's a picture of him adjusting his tie and t squared's in the picture bro i, I yeah it's crazy really yeah that to was, this day they still have those no this was in like time magazine or newsweek or something like it's a stock photo you can find i can look for it online and show you later uh yeah homie dr diet dr pepper c squared and and mr barack will be like yeah. yeah that's that's <laughs> insane um so again creating creating the sort of culture of of like coolness because of the events that you guys sort of put on out of every single event in the entirety of how long 2002 so how many years is that I that's think, still too many years yeah too many years too, so it, <laughs> out of all the events that you ran in the too many years which one has been your favorite if you were to pick one because i'm sure they, that's oh, yeah. mixed so selfishly i think x games aspen side of a mountain x games yeah side of a mountain x games brand uh i love to ski but 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 like <laughs> but dude think about this you're on the side of a ski mountain and you deliver a quality event in a tent, the bottom of a ski hill, while there's crazy shit going on outside. Um, that's the Adam and crew again, right? So to me, that brand, like X Games saying, yo, come come work with us, was, I was like, yeah, yo. Um, Austin, too hot, but but uh, Aspen for me, because the fact that we pulled it off on the side of the mountain, yeah. where there's not as much infrastructure, and it's just not set up for that stuff. No. That's my favorite from a, from a, Proud, proud Papa moment. Yeah, my favorite event ever. Uh, the Meadowlands event after we raised the ten million, when everybody walked in and we were filming the the, the TV show, and we're like, and they're like, because I I finally got to do my stage design on a cocktail napkin, and it was like, wow, projector screens. Yeah, Qua everybody's sh <gasps> like, yeah, yeah, it was yeah. just like that to me was my favorite because I saw in the eyes of the kids. Who I'd gotten to know the previous year, that like okay, I'm I'm going in the right direction. Yeah, you know, of course, if, if that makes sense. Like like I'm right on this. I know that there's other things, but on this, we're in the right direction. Yeah, so I, I wrote it down here. X Games, and yeah, we won it back to back. Yeah, right? so, <laughs> so, but, but aside from that, it was it was, and the fun, the most fun I've ever had in in any MLG event was X Games Aspen. Mm -hmm. um, it was the first time I ever went to Aspen. We we were all together, right? That's right. Yeah, I feel that's right. Yeah, we, we, we were all together. It was the event where Bobby Samsa and Adam Apicella almost clashed the two <laughs> biggest dudes in, in gaming history just like, <laughs> because everyone was having such a good time. Yeah, right and, uh, and I remember clearly Rishi and, uh, and I were like, you know, Aspen, went in Aspen, you know, yeah. get a joint. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and we, we pulled up to a club and they're like, hey, do you guys, can you allow to smoke in there? And then they're like, they're like, no. And I'm like, what if I buy bottle service? It's like, come on. So we went in there, bro. We had the biggest party ever. And it happened. It was, it was fucked up the way it happened. Okay, I'm going to tell you why. Because Fwiz, mm -hmm. the Fwiz that he is, so it's me, Fwiz, Lester, Adam Apicella, and that. And then we, you know, it was like 12. And at 12 o'clock, Fwiz comes with a tray of just shots. Like, 
the asshole that he is, right? Everyone's already drunk by now, but he comes tra- and and you know he talks his he talks yeah. he talks a good game. So everybody drank, and then from there we go to this club, and it was just like the mm-hmm. most mind blown party I've ever yeah. been to because of how cool. Every, every, it just everything was just so amazing in that sort of in in, in that spectacle that was yeah. you know the the whole experience. Because when you go to an MLG event, you're not just experiencing the tournament. You know, there's an after party, mm-hmm. and there's 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 opportunities for you to go break to go to breakfast with your friends yep, yep, on a yep, vacation. Yeah, it's yeah. like a resort because you're at a hotel, but yeah. you have an activity that, you, that that brought everybody together to give an excuse for you to hang out with people. Yeah, and and to me, that was the the experience that I've I've always loved about MLG. Is the tournament's nice, winning the tournament's awesome, but we didn't even compete at that event. Yeah, no, I remember we didn't even compete. It was it was Counter Strike and it was Halo. Yep, yep. right. And at the time, we were, I think I was talking to Reggie from uh, TSM, Reggie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and he's like, are you guys going to step into, into Counter-Strike? And I, I remember clearly saying, it's like, nah, man, we're too busy, you know, sponsoring uh, UFC athletes yeah. and yeah, putting yeah, our logo yeah, yeah, on there. Yeah, yeah. But in my head, I'm like, I'm here to see the same TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're both scouting, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So so that that was cool. He, that, Reggie is, is one of the, to me, is, is like one of the dudes that I've, that I've always like, like, you know what he built is fucking incredible dude the way he did it too the way he did it i mean if you know the inside story and stuff and like yeah much respect always yeah yeah yeah, yeah, always so so to me again the the experiential feeling that i go to an mlg event is just like dude yeah no i mean me too that's the thing like um like being being there having it get to a point where you're as long for some of the ride as much as anyone else who's made the trip was one of the really enjoyable things for me because I'd have ups and downs. I'd mm-hmm. have events where I'd have to get on camera and apologize because yeah. our internet went out. I'd have, you know, concerns for th- just whatever's going on, um, yeah. which is why Adams can be tense at events because he's doing that all day long. Yeah. Right? But to also walk out the front door, see a kid signing autographs or taking pictures and be like, I remember when nobody knew who he was. Yeah, yeah. And he came up to me and he was like, thank you, and asked me questions and asked maybe, you know, told me a little bit about himself. And like, I'm like, that's cool. And then seeing someone else, like a um, a parent, for example, that you get to know. Um, like that's the stuff that like to me w- really was one of the reasons why on tough days, it's like no, nah, there's no bad days doing yeah. stuff you love. It's nope. just tough days. Agreed. Yeah. So one of the one of the first times that I ever, uh, that may have been the second event that I attended that I saw the the power of of personalities in the game was uh, there was this one commentator. I think it's tasteless or artosis. One so, one okay. of those two. But I saw him walking off the stage. He was a commentator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw him walk off the stage and he got mobbed. mobbed and, yeah. and, and I'm like. One day our lines are gonna be that long. I'm like, we have. I'm like, oh, in, my, I, yeah. in, in, in my head, I'm like, I have to make that happen, and yeah. we did. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, and no, and and it wasn't a, a, you know, that's cool. It was like to be, to have that sort of relationship with people you've never met is what attracted me to it. It's building, the response, it's building community, yeah. dude. It's building, yeah. And, no, and it wasn't again. It wasn't like, oh shit, I'm fucking famous. You know, for yeah. me, it's never been that. Yeah. Right? It's 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 the the community, the the yeah. relationship that you as human are able to 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 sort of create. Dude, think about this. Think about how many kids woke up this morning inspired by you. I don't think. No, about no, no, that. no, 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 no. I'm just saying because of the community yeah. that they're in and the like-minded people. They're in. I'm not saying where they're like, I want to be Hector, but yeah. they're like, what Hector and his and his crew, mm-hmm. Optic, yeah, right, and more, right. But they're like, I'm part of this. Yeah. I'm part. I'm the part of the Green Wall, bro. Yeah. That's pretty cool, man. And and so and there's and there's many slices of that within our world, and that's the thing that blows me away. And yeah. I, I really, uh, I like that. I like that a lot because they are part of something bigger right and you everyone wants to feel like that but it's also it's like we said in a couple of years they may be going to events hanging out with their buddies waking up getting you know breakfast in the restaurant going to drive cars if they're yeah. in vegas or shoot guns or where yeah, you yeah. know because we all know the little things we like to do in the cities we go to yeah. right yeah yep, yep, yep. <laughs> um, um i think it's cool man i think it's great that that, that, that exists in, in general yeah. but especially in our space i i can i can tell you that every single event before before we became who we became, every single MLG event, when Call of Duty was off on the station, there was no chairs for people to sit around, 15 people you know, walking around watching people play. I remember seeing the stardom and, and just be in awe that that was a possibility. Mm. Now, here I am, a 20, let's call it, nine-year-old dude seeing you know 
19, 20, 21 year old kids essentially like the 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 Mason Cops, the Washies, mm-hmm. the the you know the the epitome of the original sort of gangsters when it comes to f- gaming fame. I was just mind blown because Halo. Uh, the Halo audience in in the Halo attitude of competitors was different than the than the StarCraft community. Oh yeah, and and the and the way that they acted. Yeah. So for me, it's it's always been a, like that, like community building friends that you've never yeah. met will probably never meet, uh, and and that's a responsibility that I always take. Like I wake up thinking, yeah. you know, what do they want to see today? Right. You know, so so for me, that's that's always been important, and, and, and largely because I through through what you built and what with you and your team built. I saw the possibilities and I saw the opportunity and I saw something that I wanted to be a part of so badly that that's what happened. So anyway, I, I usually ask this question at the beginning of the um, mm-hmm. of the podcast. So I'm going to ask it now because I, w- I want to talk about your, your current project. So who are you today? That's a good question, dude. You <laughs> get metaphysical. Um, I'm uh, no longer a professional skier, uh, so I'm, I'm back to work a bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> so really quickly, you were getting paid. To, I was getting paid to ski, to ski, and, and to hang out with by my pool. So I was, yeah, yeah. You're a, professional, a professional, professional lifeguard and a professional skier. How, can you talk about how that happens? Um, you, so if, yeah, I, so so basically, what happened is we sold the business, half the business to Activision, the other half we chunked off and sold to somebody else. One part was very public, the other part was not. I went along. I had a, an engagement letter to stay on. They wanted me to do a bunch of stuff for them. Over time, that role shifted. They didn't really have a spot for me. They said, hey, we'll just we'll, we'll let you know yeah. if we need you. And then the call didn't come for a while. And I, I did so. I was helping in the back. I was helping Adam with stuff. Yeah. I was flying to events and sp- doing keynotes and speaking on panels yeah. and stuff. But I was skiing a lot. And I was yeah. hanging out at home a lot, driving my family. At first, it was great. And then I probably was driving them crazy. So, But that ended <laughs> in March of this year. Yeah. So we agreed to say uh, peace out. Um, still have a great relationship with Bobby Kodak. Still really proud of what we and the guys continue to build over there with Overwatch League being something we had a hand in, the upcoming Call of Duty League being something, and, and CWL being something. So, so now, fast forward to um, where I am now, and I have um, a few businesses that I'm, I'm, I'm launching um, outside of the gaming space and some inside. Um, I'll just give you the area. So I'm getting into the pet industry. Mm-hmm. I'm getting into the supplement space with some some good people. And then the third thing is um, gaming related. So cool. yeah, and we'll be public about all that pretty soon. But so I'm I'm back to my entrepreneurial ways, right? I'm I'm somebody who's I want to do a lot, but I also want to have enough time in my days to focus on the things. So there, you know, I can't do everything all the time. I yeah. gotta kind of break it up into lanes. Yeah, one of the one of the things that you never stop being an entrepreneur and you never really know that you're an entrepreneur until you try something right, right. and and for me like even even now taking the, the year off that i took off and fuck i shouldn't know right i was like yeah. poor poor thing but i i i always like the, the the businesses that i'm involved in right now that i haven't been public about like those are things that i wanted to do for a very long time right, that yeah. i haven't been able to do because i've been you know i've been Busy. dad yeah, yeah. <laughs> so and then the time that came for me to be able to do those things like i'm finally i finally you know made it i i i i uh, i did okay for myself you know and i consulted the steel like my before i sold i consulted with every well my top 5 picks for esports business entrepreneurs you were one of them. I read my deal through you. Like, what do you think of this deal? You fucking take it, right? It was it was unanimous across the entire. Well, board. I remember what, specifically what I said to you. I was like, you have your number circle. Yeah, you're gonna get that. And you're like, yeah. I was like, all right, man. Yeah. You know. So anyway, so uh, aside yeah. from that, you, you never really stop being an entrepreneur. You no. you just can't. It, once you once you get out of the matrix, essentially, <laughs> then you understand really what it feels like to to work with people not work for people and not have people work for you. First thing I told Matt when I hired him is that you're on paper, you're my employee, but you're here to work with me. We're working on something together. I'm, right. I'm, I'm your boss, but only because I'm the one that pays you your shit. I'm not going to, as long as you do your job, I'm never going to act like a boss to you, period. If you do your job, like, let's just work. And that that sort of mentality has always carried through in, in, in the entirety of everything that I've done because content to me is something sacred. The attention span and the, the eyeballs that, 
I've been so blessed to receive from from the audience that I have from the green wall and and, and outside of that. That's a responsibility that I'd never take for granted or lightly. And I take that responsibility as serious as I take being a father to my daughter yeah. and, a, and, a, and a big brother to all of my players. Um, and again, for me, that is priority number one because, and, and that's what, again, you know, you look at, and I'm not talking shit about ESL or, yeah. or anybody else, but I've never been to an ESL event or that and had like an experience where I was just like, that was a fucking dope ass event. Even when they took over uh, Halo, even when they took over Call of Duty in the place that they put it in, I was just like, man, what, when, when can we get back to traveling to Anaheim? When, when, when can we get back to the esports traveling carnival? That is what I, I grew up and I, and I was already an old ass man, like 29 when I started, <laughs> but I grew up on that. Like yeah. I, I mentally, and I, I met, and spiritually, truly, because I was really free at that point. I was no longer working for somebody. Uh, like I grew up in those in those sort of heydays uh, of that. What do, do you? Uh, obviously, you can tell me whatever, <laughs> right? But uh, and I've heard your opinion. But events like MLG Anaheim will never happen again because of, or they will, but not necessarily for. Call of Duty the way that they've happened before. Is that a sad thing to you? Like seeing what the, the sort of culture you created where anybody can show up. You, me, Maddie, and, and Roger can go show up and com- try to compete right. uh, in a Call of Duty event. And if we're good enough, we're going to get on main stage and play Scump and, or Clayster or right. whoever. Is, does that sadden you a tiny little bit? Yeah, man. I think because that aspirational component and the fact that we saw... Dude, I remember when Enable mm-hmm. was a punk little kid playing halo Mm -hmm. and i had to have a conversation with him and his team in the in the hallway outside the venue because of how they were communicating yeah and look at him now right more than 10 years later um at that time he wasn't coming thinking he was going to get a shot against the ogre twins Mm -hmm. but guess what he did eventually Mm -hmm. right it wasn't but it wasn't that one event so yeah i think the greatness that you have the potential for greatness that you have in an open environment for competition is, in theory, someone can go off and ha- it's any given Sunday, right? Yeah. Um, I understand why there's a movement away from that stuff, but I- I'll tell you this. I'd be real surprised if in some shortish period of time, over the next year, change, whatever it may be, you don't see that resuscitated, right? Yeah. Revived, yeah. Uh, brought back to life because... Um, it's, it's you don't recognize how important something is. Like you yeah. take out a structural beam in this building, yeah. like oh I like it, it looks better. And then the ceiling falls. You're like shit, we got to rebuild the ceiling, right? Yeah. I feel like that could be what one of the would, things would happen, right? Yeah. I, I, I'm not saying 100 percent will, but the community deserves that as well. People deserve opportunities to interact with the game that they're willing to invest time, effort, yeah. and energy, money into. You know, in, in in a really compelling, exciting way. So, yeah, it does. It is a. Then Adam would tell you that in spades, man, because yeah. he championed for that, like yeah. real champion for yeah. it in a way which I really admire and, and I think is important. Yeah. So I, I've been mulling that over like nonstop. So like, can I hold open events here, like once a week, and and, <laughs> and, 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 and you know just for fun, right? Just right. At, at first, and you know maybe it, it builds in something uh, else. Uh, any exciting projects that that you see not just yours but just in the space like what are your hopes for for esports as a as a whole um yeah so i i think it's i think that the stuff that's really exciting like i was meeting w- with with hastro today and he's got some stuff planned which is fun i was speaking to you i was speaking to you know uh, the nyxl guys in new york i think the exciting thing is happening right and and um, the liquids of the world and, and you know, it's just, I think the exciting thing is happening is people are now at a point where they've matured enough and their businesses are at a point where they're recognizing opportunity as opposed to necessity, right? Yeah. And so uh, there's still a lot of work to be done by the leagues, all of them, not, not you know, and not calling on any individual one, and sure. by teams yep. in order to make sure that they are able to be successful. You can't just assume you're going to be successful. I think the teams, there's a great difference in how a lot of them are operated. Mm -hmm. I think some will be stronger than others. That's the same thing with baseball, the Mm -hmm. NBA, the NFL, right? Some are just better than others and how they operate and how much revenue they create. So I'm excited about that layer in here Mm -hmm. that's not sexy getting built out, right? So infrastructure, picks and shovels, the things that are required 
for business owners and investors to come into this space and know that there's a way to get to that sustainable, healthy business because the work has been done. We, we, we've fast forwarded so far with esports in the last you know, couple of years, really since Overwatch League came out and like these teams became limited assets and everything's moving to structured league. Well, not, but most things are moving to structured leagues, but that work hasn't been done in that middle layer. Mm -hmm. That's the thing that excites me most. And that's something I'm going to be focusing on. If, I think. if you, if you look at esports and then you, you put it on a scale from one to 10, one being, you know, the platform where it started and 10 being completion as, as completion can be the way that sports will never be competed, got completed. But in, in the scale of like, you look at traditional sports, that's it. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, unless you do what esports is doing, and you sort of develop that that online, you know, sort of relationship with the fans, that's it for them. You know, that's as big as they're ever gonna get. They're yeah. not gonna get any bigger than that, no matter how hard they try. If anything, people are running away from. Yeah, from yeah, the, yeah. So whatever. Where do you think we're we we're at at that point? Four and a half. Four and a half. Yeah. We're not even halfway there. I no, agree. A hundred percent. We're not halfway there. And and the thing is, is that's not saying that everybody you know, is going to get past five. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not saying that either. I'm just saying that the whole thing is not even halfway there, mm -hmm. um, it, which is, to me is exciting as hell, dude. Same. Yeah. Dude, I, when you said that you have to be a little bit of a fortune teller, or, or, I, I've always said that I can see the future. Right. I, everybody that I talk to, and they get annoyed, but I don't give a shit. <laughs> I can see the future. I know where I this- I knew you were going to get annoyed. See, I saw the future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, I, I know where this thing is going, which yeah, is why yeah, like the, yeah. the, the, the businesses that I've been working on yeah. in, be, behind Skull's Door get me so excited because I just see them. You know, yeah, I see yeah. I see the need for every single one of the things that I'm creating, That's right, the same dude. way that you're doing your, your, your thing. And- the fact that I don't know, I, I don't want to get, get to it, but the fact that people don't see that is just like, dude, people can't see what's, for us. Yeah, people, you know, they have blinders on. They can't see what's right here. They can't see through what's right there. They yeah. can't, and and that's it's better for us, like you yeah. said, dude. Much yeah. better. Much much better. Uh, anyway, do, do you have anything else to say, man? I, know I just want to say it's good to see you, bro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I came. Uh, I was. Uh, I told you I flew to Chicago yesterday from New York, drove to Wisconsin, back to Chicago, got delayed, came here, and I was afraid I was going to miss you. So I'm glad I made it, and thanks for having me on, dude. Yeah, bro. Thank As you always. so much, man. I appreciate your friendship, your mentorship, Absolutely, everything about you, bro. Thank back you so you. much. Thanks, uh, Thank you again to to the sponsors. Uh, we do appreciate you showing up. Best Spoke, uh, all the information is listed down below, as well as Zebit and, you know, always and forever uh, Seagate. In fact, I'm going to give you uh, a, a hard drive for, I'm going to have to give you three so you have three <laughs> sons so i'm gonna give you three oh, weird, um, external hard drives for you to take to the boys that way they don't have to you know oh, store you, all their stuff and appreciate that yeah uh so yeah thanks a lot man i appreciate you Absolutely. uh everybody we'll see you guys next week at the same time maddie hit them with the music